الله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة عبده وابن عبده وابن أمته ومن لا غنى به طرفة عين عن رحمته وأصلي وأسلم على خير هاد محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله ومن والاه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه الأمين فاللهم اجزه عنا خير ما جزيت نبيا عن أمته ورسولا عن رسالته ودعوته أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise be to Allah the king of the world, the master of the day of judgment, I bear witness no one is worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and greatest messenger was sent to mankind to bring them out of the darkness of this world to the light of this world and the hereafter and from the darknesses and from the injustices of religions to the justice of Islam. The only religion will be accepted by Allah the only religion in the sight of Allah in the deen in the Allah in Islam وَمَنْ يَتَّخِذْ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ My brothers and sisters in Islam While I was listening to the fireworks last night from inside my house question came to my mind and I actually asked my wife and I said, how many of those people who are celebrating and how many of those people who are firing this or this work, how many of them reflected and looked at the previous year to see if they have done things that deserve to be celebrated? How many of them valued and recounted and evaluated the past year. Those who are celebrating, and those who are getting drunk, and those who are excited, and those who are happy. What they have done, and how much they have achieved, and how much they have wished to be celebrating or to deserve to, to celebrate. وَكَمَا قِيلْ فِي عِيدِنَا ليس العيد لمن لبس الجديد ولكن العيد لمن خاف يوم الوعيد The Eid and the celebration is not for the person who just dress new stuff and wears new clothes but the Eid and the real celebration for the person who fears the day of judgment on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So very important this question resonated and this question became the reason or became the main topic of my khutbah today inshallah is how we looked back and yes this is their new year and we live amongst them and that is by no means give us the excuse to celebrate with them and it doesn't give us the justifications to congratulate them even though my phone and my text messages were full with these kinds of messages and the emails as well yeah, and it comes from Muslims that uh, wishing you happy new year and perhaps you would not receive that message on the day of Eid and this is the mentality and this is the rusty mind that we have achieved and we have reached to. So it's very important and this is how nufus are. Very important to start unrusting if I could use the term. 
and very important that we need to start polishing these souls and these minds and these intellects and these brains to go back to the original and to the pure resources of this deen, the Quran and the Sunnah and the Hidi, the Hadi and the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But however, we take the opportunity and we take this chance to reflect, to reflect and to evaluate ourselves and to evaluate where we stand and to see how much we have gone. Wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم that Allah will not change your condition until, unless you change your own self so it's very important we have to reflect on this point and that is in nafs this nafs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you this nafs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had instilled in you this nafs that wants to take you down the goal and the, 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 the purpose of this nafs to take you down to the ground, to make you beg and to make you go further and further away from Arsh al-Rahman. So it's very important that we know how to tame it and very important we know how to take care of it and we have to know how to discipline it and we have to know how to, 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 to cool it down and to hold it down and to control it so we can achieve our purpose in life. And there is no better way to do that than evaluating this nafs every while and every time and every now and then to see where it's taking you or where you're taking her. It's very important and very significant. يعني يقول ميمون بن مهران رحمه الله one of the علماء of this ummah he said hold yourself accountable the way you will hold your partner. يعني if you have a partner in business you will always sit with him to see how much the business is making, how much he's taking and how much you're taking, what is he's doing and what you're doing and how he's contributing to the business and how you are. And then he said, فَقَدْ قِيلَ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَقَدْ قِيلَ مِنْ قَبْلِ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ خَوَّانَةٌ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَشَرِيكٌ خَوَّانٌ وَإِنْ تَرَكْتَهُ ذَهَبَ بِمَالِكٌ As they said before, as he continues to say, that in nafs is like an untrustworthy partner. This nafs that you have and Allah has given you is like untrustworthy partner. If you don't hold him accountable, if you're not watching over him, if you're not sitting with him to, ev to evaluate and to, to recount, then he will go with, you all, with all of your money. He will go with the business. One day you'll come and there is no business. And as the brothers who dealt with people like that, and we hear about them and we see them every day. So the point is, this is the nafs that Allah had given you. So you have to be in charge and you have to be in position and you have to hold it. And when we, when we come to, and we have a few weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, we had our new year. يعني the year, the new year, al hijrah And we are in 1431 these days. And we are still in Muharram. The point is, we need to reflect. Yani one of the main reasons for what the ulama call intikas and intikas is to return the way you were. Yani nuks, if you look in the Arabic language, the meaning of nuks is to be upside down. Yani imagine a man whose head is where his feet are and walking. A man whose head where his feet are and walking. How you think he will achieve? You think he will be able to do anything? You think he will be able to achieve anything? He can't do anything. Walking on his head. Yeah, and those people will walk on the day of judgment, they are the kuffar, will walk on the day of judgment on their faces. But in the dunya, lintikas, it's when you are straight and when you start getting on the path and you start knowing your purpose in life and suddenly you return back. You bounce back. You're upside down now. Your situation changes. So it's very important that we have to look into this disease and very important we have to avoid it. والوقاية خير من قنطار علاج يعني you need to be prepared you need to know this disease you need to study it so you don't fall in it and you don't contract it very important يعني you see people wearing masks because they are worried of the flu the same thing here we have to wear that mask but not, not the physical mask that you see on people's noses that the one of them might wear it for, for a few days and it's not effective after the first hour anyway so the point is we have to reflect we have to evaluate how much we have achieved in this past year as Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
telling us, Ya Wattaku Yawman Turjauna Fihi Ilallah and be aware and be afraid of a day that you will return to Allah, a day that He will hold you accountable. The day of al hisab and the day of the reckoning, and the day of the ard, and the day of the sirat, and the day of the mizan. All that day, you will be standing before Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Why? To ask you about what you've done. So, isn't it wise that we reflect? Isn't it wise that we reevaluate? Yani the people who celebrate every year as passes. First of all, I don't know what they're celebrating. Getting one year closer to the grave. That's the first point. The second point is, a person who's not working and who's not achieving. Yani, if we're not talking about the deen, let's talk about the dunya. Yani, most of these people who are celebrating, if they look even back how much they achieved in the dunya, you find them achieved nothing. So what are you celebrating about anyway? So very important, the Muslim needs to be fatan and needs to be wise. And this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الكيس من دان نفسه وعمل لما بعد الموت والأحمق من أتبع نفسه هواها وتمنى على الله الأماني يعني the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم given كلم يعني الفصاحة and the eloquence and the greatest words he said the the smart one and the wise one is the one who works for what's after the here, what's after death? Mandana nafsa, who hold himself accountable. Yeah, and you know what that means to hold yourself accountable. That doesn't mean hiring an accountant, because we do hire accountants for our dunya, which is fine. Yeah, and if he can save you some money in taxes, that's great. And we are, sometimes we're so excited about saving $500 in taxes, we, we are like thrilled. But at the same time, we don't have an accountant for the Akhirah. Why we don't think like that? Very important. You, for that, you have the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah, and it's free. The accountant charges you. This one, free. You have. You have to present your actions, your achievements on the Qur'an and the Sunnah. You have to value and evaluate how much you've done. You have to evaluate, is this year better than last year? And did I do more this year than last year? I know you can do that with business. I know you're well prepared to answer it. I know you have documents and papers and files and all that for your business and for how much money you made. You have that for your akhir, the real place of investment. Have you, have any one of us sat down to write how much he has achieved or how much he has improved in the deen from last year? How much he had contributed to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We, became, we became a con consumers. We need to contribute. We have to contribute. Yani, if, you are, if you're standing today before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and He asks you the question, what have you done for your deen? What's your answer? Yani, you know the story of the three people who got stuck in the cave. Yani, the cave closed and they're stuck. They cannot move the, the rock. They cannot, from Bani Israel, as the Prophet ﷺ said in Bukhari, the point is, each one of them, they said, let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huh, to help us. So what did they do? Each one of them said something that he did for the sake of Allah. That thing he did was purely for the sake of Allah. So every time he said that, he will end his words with, Oh Allah, if I did it for your sake, open the, open the, the cave. So the rock moves a little bit. Then the second one say his story. And the third, if you are in that cave, and we are, we are in the cave of the dunya. We are in the cave of the dunya. We're stuck. We're so attached. And the one of us, if he tries to break out, he can't. We're so attached. So it's very important to ask yourself this question. If I stand before, if I'm, maybe that's difficult to imagine. If I stuck in a cave, 
what is it that I've done in this dunya to ask Allah to help me because of if you can't find anything then you have not been evaluating yourself if you, have, if you can't find anything that means you're not holding yourself account if you can't find anything I promise you maybe maybe before you die the book of your good deeds is empty because if you're not adding it's decreasing that's the fact that's the fact يعني يقول the علماء they used to say من استوى يوما فهو مقبول whose two days are equal he's a fool يعني if you're today in good deeds trying to do better trying to do to improve is not better than yesterday يعني yesterday now you have experience of yesterday your experience has an extra day so if you're today, you did not benefit from this experience that you learned the previous day and your today is equal to your previous day, there is no improvement, there is nothing better in your life to try to build, then you're a fool. And that's the reality. A fool person is someone who has the opportunity but doesn't take advantage of it. But imagine when your today is worse than your yesterday. فقالوا وَمَنْ كَانَ يَوْمُهُ شَرًّا مِنْ أَمْسِهِ فَهُوَ مَلْعُونَ أعوذ بالله And whose today is worse than his yesterday, then he's cursed. يعني you know what مَلْعُون means? You know what curse means? We hear curse, curse. You know what that means? He's taken away from the mercy of Allah. يعني he gets no mercy. And you know what happens to a person like that. So if you did not learn from the experience of last day and you did not realize that now you're one day short in life and you make your today worse than your yesterday, then you're cursed. يعني Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala من يضلل الله فما له من هاد Whom Allah misguide, he will not find guidance. Then they say ومن لم يحاسب نفسه بزيادة أعماله فعمله في نقصان. and who who's not accounting and reckoning himself and holding himself accountable for what he had done يعني you're not keeping track of your actions and your good deeds and making sure they're going up it's gonna go down if you're not evaluating your achievements obviously you're going down <coughs> then they said وَمَنْ كَانَ عَمَلُهُ فِي نُقْصَانِ فَالْمَوْتُ خَيْرٌ له. and whose good deeds are going down then he better dies يعني death is better than for him why? because if he dies most probably his actions will stop right there there is no more decrease but if he continues to live with such mentality and attitude he will get a point where he, where he will run out. That's it. So very important we have to, to hold. And this, this is the key for change. And this is the key for everything. This is the key how you can continue improving. يعني we go into Ramadan, some of the brothers always ask, why I, I'm, I'm so charged, I'm so hyped in Ramadan. I pray, I fast, I read Quran, I do this, I do that. After Ramadan, I'm done. I go back the way I was. The key is muhasabat al nafs. The key is because we don't hold ourselves accountable. Because if you would hold yourself accountable and look back and say, wow, I've done all this in Ramadan, I want to do more. I want to improve. I want to get better. But if you go with the flow, as they said, then you can't, you're going down. That's why we, we happen, what happens to us after Ramadan. So we have to hold ourselves accountable for our actions. We have to hold ourselves accountable for this dunya. كما قال أبو الدرداء إنما أنت أيام فإن ذهب يوم ذهب بعضك. You are nothing. يعني you we only days. We're just days. All of us. Each one of us is a is certain number of days. يعني that's your life. Your age when you die. 
your days. When one day passes, part of you goes away. That's the reality. So why we don't value this time? Why we have to be like those who celebrate what they have not achieved? Who celebrate their failure? يَقُولُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَلَقَدْ دَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمْ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا أُولَئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلُّ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ الله سبحانه وتعالى says سورة الأعراف and we had set for Jahannam a lot of jinn and ins. A lot of people for Jahannam. Who are those? They have hearts, but they don't use them. They don't reflect. They don't ponder. They don't evaluate themselves. They don't put it in the right position, in the right, they don't give it the right job. Our hearts today is just uh, a receiver for all the shahawat and all the fitan. That's all we do. That's all we use our hearts for. For fitan. Yani, the one of us puts himself and puts in his house all sort of fitans and all kind of temptations. Just reception. Yani, a receiver. Just the way you have those dishes outside your house, though the same way your heart has become. Yani, baratitu. One of the, one of the ubad. Yani, who, who, whatever you think you have done the ibadah, you can't reach this man. Sparatito used to go in the salah 10 days. In prayer, 10 days he will not get out. 10 days. Fasting and praying for 10 days straight. Not, yani get out of the salah. The shaitan himself got tired of him. He could not do, he could not deceive this man. So he gathers the يعني the strongest or the highest level of shayatin. The most effective, most tempting shayatin called al marada And he tells them about paratito. Paratito. He said, I want to deceive him. This is Abid Zahid. يعني he divorced the dunya. كما قال علي بن أبي طالب. بينتو كثلاثة. يعني he, he talks to himself about the dunya as we are talking. He said, يعني you're trying to fool me. I have divorced you three times to the dunya. You know, when you divorce a woman three times, you can't get back to her unless she gets married to someone else and gets divorced again. But without planning, يعني حل الهذا. So, so he gathers the marada. He said, who can help me with baratit? Who can deceive him? So one of the marada with the name of Al Abiyad, the white, Al Abiyad, that's his name. This married was assigned to the prophets. He was assigned to deceive the prophets. He said, I'll take care of him. <coughs> so he gets, he turns into like a abid, a good man. He walks into Baratit or some a place of worship. And he calls on him. Baratito comes from the same, what you want? He said, I want to join you. I heard about you. So Baratito says, leave me alone. He gets in the salah Baratito for 10 days. He comes out. He finds this, this Abiyad still waiting for him in a form of a human. He said, what you want? I want to join you. Leave me alone. I don't have time for that. He gets. So then when Baratito gets out of the tent, he watch. he, he look at this man. He finds him or this jinn. He finds him still in Ibad. And he goes for 40 days. So Baratito now looks at him and he said, this man is better than me. So he brings him up, he tells him, you're my teacher. Then the, the, the story continues and all that. Then jen, this jinn leaves and he turns, he starts uh, possessing people. And then when they can't find a cure, he tells them, the person who can help you is Baratito. Now Baratito is separated from the people, isolated himself. But the point is, at the end he brings him a woman who was, he ha, had possessed, he brings it to Baratito. He tells them, Baratito gonna refuse to treat her. So just ask him if she could stay next door so he can watch over her. So they let it, 
then this man possesses this woman, this jinn possesses the woman until she, she exposes herself and Baratito with one look, he is doomed. One look. That look, one of the arrows of shaitan went in his heart to the point where at the end, as you all know the rest of the story, where he makes sajda to the shaitan. And that's when they kill him. But the point is I'm trying to make is one small look can destroy this heart that Allah gave you to reflect with it, to ponder about Allah, to think about it, to think what's prepared for you. But we don't use it. Yani we, 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 we put it and we, we expose it to everything that is wrong, to everything that is haram. So that's what these people, yani the, a lot of people for Jahannam, their description, لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهِ and they're not using their hearts. لَهُمْ عُيُونٌ لَهُمْ أَبْصَارٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهِ أَعْيُونٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهِ They have eyes, they don't see with. Yeah, I see you, you see me. But they don't see the truth. And the truth in front of them, they don't see. Why? Because his eyes are busy watching other stuff. His eyes are busy looking at their own things. وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا They have ears, but they don't hear with them. Their hearts, their eyes, and their ears are not being used the way they're supposed to. That's the bottom line. Then what's the point? أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ Those are like animals. Allah says, بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلْ They are even more misguided. Why? Why they are more misguided than animals? You know what an animal does? Eat, sleep, eat, sleep. That's all they do. Because the animal knows what's good for him. The animal doesn't throw himself into destruction. And if you bring an animal, a donkey, Jalla put him on, on a top of a mountain, there is no way this donkey is going to jump out of the, of the mountain or out of the building. He won't. Because he know he will be destroyed. And they use donkeys to open roads and mountains. They put a donkey and whatever path he takes, that is the safest path to open, to open a road. That's the reality. The point is, those people are more misguided than donkeys because donkeys don't throw themselves into tahluka. They don't destroy themselves with their own hands. Us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had shown us the right way, had shown us what's good for you and what's bad for you, and yet we still insist to do what's bad for us. So who's better, the donkey who doesn't harm himself or us? And you look at the number of people committing suicide these days, even within the Muslim societies. It's unheard of. That is the result of getting away from Allah, from the commands of Allah. Why? Because we're so arrogant, we think we know better. You know who said that? In the Quran, Fir'aun. You know who else? Qarun. You know who said that before them? Iblis. Yeah, and it's enough not to do that because you will be on the footsteps of those three. Iblis, Fir'aun, and Qarun. You know what happens to Iblis? You know what happens to Fir'aun? Qarun, the, the earth opened and swallowed him. So, why we want to be like them? We don't. I don't think anyone wants to. But the fact that we're not doing the opposite, we're not doing the right thing, we are falling behind them. So be aware of that. So the point is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Those are the unaware people. Those are the, uh, the oblivious. Those who go with the flow, as I said. Those who are in hellfire, who, who don't use their hearts and ears and eyes. They're ghafil, yani he doesn't know what he's here for. He's unaware. Maybe he knows, but he doesn't follow it. He doesn't do it. And most probably, that was the case with 99.99% .99 of those who were doing fireworks last night. But they just don't know, maybe. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established the hujjah on them when he created them.
قول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على محمد الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Inshallah, if you can come forward a little bit, make some space. So in summary, the way we, what we take from this khutbah, and what we take from the time we're living in these days, and wallahi يعني الذي لا إله إلا هو, and this is an uh, يعني swearing and an oath I make, is these days are the 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 most hated days to me throughout the year. يعني the stuff we have to deal with are just annoying. What we take from it as the Muslim, as being wise, being kayyis, is he has to take advantage of every situation. The ummah is going through hardships, as we all know. Someone might say, what is he talking about? And the ummah is drowning, and the ummah is being tortured, and the ummah and Muslims are blockaded, and the Muslims are in sanctions, and being bombed and killed and tortured. That is the reality. And you know better than me about this. <coughs> but what I'm trying to achieve and reach is how to change that condition. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اغتنم خمسا قبل خمس Take advantage of five things before five things. عمرك قبل موتك قبل هرمك شبابك قبل هرمك Take advantage of your life before death. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, وَشَبَابَكَ قَبْلَ هَرَمِي And your youth, before your old age. But the youth is part of the, of your life, isn't it? Youth, all the stages you live in, part of your life. So why the Prophet ﷺ needed to focus on that mentioning again? It's like repetition. No, what the Prophet ﷺ is telling you, it's during your youth age is where you can contribute the most to this ummah. يعني الشباب بين ضعفين مرحلة الشباب بين ضعفين. The the stage of your life when you are young comes and falls between two stages of your life when you're weak, when you're baby, and when you are old. So that is the part of your life you need to take advantage of. And if I look here, about 80, 90 percent of us are young. So the question becomes what we have done for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll be so honest with you and I will open my heart because I love all of you. And I will be so straightforward. This dunya that we are so attached, the world we attach to. And I'm not saying forget about the dunya and sit in the masjid or sit in your house. A'yadu billah. Qul man harra mazinat Allah lati akhraja li'ibadihi min al-tayyibat, min al-rizq, min al-tayyibat. Ya'ani... The point is, are you happy? Yani, are you satisfied? Yani, we always hear, the poor is complaining, and the rich is complaining. That's the reality. The healthy is complaining, and the sick is complaining. Yani, we visited brother two weeks ago or a week ago, a man who was a young man in his 40s, I guess, or 50, whatever, but he was walking normal. Normal. Yeah, and he healthy like any one of us. He gets an infection, they put him in hospital, they give him blood, transfusion. Any blood, he, he contracts two viruses from this blood. But you find these viruses in any blood. But because of his immune system, those viruses were more effective, more harmful. 
one of them is treatable 90%. The other one sits in the brain. The average life for a person after that is about six months. And it's all in Allah's hand. But the average people who get that virus with this situation of kind of immune system, they don't live more than six to a year, six months to a year. But that person just went for a simple infection yeah, in his blood. And yet, we are healthy and we complain. And that guy, that brother, overnight, he can't speak. So the bottom line is, we cannot just keep complaining. And who you complain to? You complain about the creation to the creation, or you complain about Allah to the creation. What can they do? And why we complain? Every time you go through hardships, remember that someone had it worse. Yani as long as you can use the bathroom on your own, you are in a great shape. So what's taking us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the world, the dunya. Tayyib. We know the dunya is your vehicle to the akhirah. So even the dunya that you forgot about the akhirah and you are so stuck with this life and you're still not happy. You're still not satisfied. You see someone who drives better car than you, you complain. You see someone who lives in a bigger house, you complain. And you are rich, you see someone who's richer than you, you complain. And you get the money and now you're so stressed how to maintain it and how to make it grow and how this and how that. And as they said, you're going to get tired if you are a millionaire trying to live the life of the billionaires. But the bottom line is, we are so investing in the dunya and we're still not happy. So isn't it worth to give it a shot and try to invest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yani don't forget about the dunya. Don't forget about that. But invest the way that Allah wants you to invest. And as long as when we see each other, we praise each other like we are living in Jannah already in paradise, we can never improve. The believer is the mirror of his brother. And when you see your brother, he should remind you of your shortcomings. But we always praising each other like we are great. We're in great shape. And if you are a Muslim, who is dealing and who is living the conditions of this ummah and think we are in great shape, yani I don't find a word to describe you. So let's reflect and let's each one of us hold himself accountable. Yani one of us might say, but I'm one person, what can I do? You can do Allah. You are one person and he's, imagine, we listen yani, this, this advice from me and I, I need it more than you. We listen to that and each one of us holds himself accountable and change one thing haram that he's been doing for the last year. Yani you took few mo some money and you put it in a CD account. You say, you know what? I want to take it out. That's it. I don't want to deal with it. I'm going to lose some money, but I, won't, I don't want to deal. One thing. Try. Each one of us, imagine you do one thing haram, you get that. You know how many steps the victory will come closer? Isn't Allah says, in tansurullah yansurkum? You give Allah victory, Allah gives you victory. And the way you give Allah victory is by obeying Him and avoiding abstaining from the haram. So if each one of us takes one thing haram from his life, today, yani, today, because you don't know if you live tomorrow, look how many of us, yani, maybe we, we are here, I would say more than 15 people, right? But the point is, we are getting 15 steps closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think with that mentality. Think that that sin that you're committing yourself delays the victory from this sin. Take the responsibility. You have to be responsible. Yani the Sahaba, they were victorious and the way Allah opened the world for them. Why? Because they were responsible. They felt the duty toward each other. They felt the responsibilities toward the whole. The whole. You are not a segregated person who lives on his own and die on your own. If you want to live like that, then go for it. But you will be forgotten. You might not find someone to bury you. 
وكما قيل إن لم تزد في الدنيا فأنت زيادة عليها If you can add and contribute to this dunya and to this ummah then you're just a burden No one of us accepts to be a burden and him يعني some people when you see them you say أعوذ بالله Why you want to be like that? Be a person who's a, who's a man, a woman, a young kid, a kid. Be person of this ummah. Take the responsibility. Put your foot down and say, I want to contribute to the change of this ummah. But you stay the way you are, stagnant. You don't want to change. You are the same thing. What's the point of your life? So if we live with this mentality, I promise you, it's going to change. Next year, it's going to be much better. But we don't. So start from now and take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Raise them the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Raise them the way that will bring the victory to this ummah and the solution. Don't get stuck with those superficial things. If we see some fireworks, we get excited. If we see some this, we get excited. A new holiday, we get excited. That is not. لا خير في أمة كثرة أعيادهم. There is no good in a nation that has too many holidays. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. وارض اللهم عن الصحابة والتابعين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم بلطفك وكرمك يا رحم الراحمين. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم ذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم دمر أعداء الدين اللهم ردنا إلى ديننا ردا جميلا اللهم ردنا إلى ديننا ردا جميلا اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير اللهم اجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير اللهم اجعل الموت راحة من كل لنا من كل شر عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتائه ذا القربى وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واقم الصلاه